Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Double Sleeved. I'm joined here by Ryan and today is going to be one of my favorite days for this channel. We are talking everything U6 related. We have not seen, I, I'm pretty sure almost any support since uh, Assault of the Saiyans, which was set 7. Um, and now we're getting some beefy, beefy looks at, you know, some some new support. Two brand new leaders, pretty much all of blue revolving around Universe 6 and... Uh, for people that know me, you know, I absolutely love Universe 6 and when I saw that they were on the actual preview video, I just couldn't contain my excitement. So I'm actually even more excited to go over all these reveals with you guys today. And before I jump into to my uh, personal favorite leader, unfortunately, I've got to put it off to Ryan so he can go through the second <laughs> best leader of the set. Ryan, take us away with Kale. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, starting off, yeah, as you said, Kale, Universe 6, auto, when this card attacks, draw one card, uh, auto, at the end of your turn, place up to one card under this card in your energy in rest mode. So we're starting to see a bit more of a ramp uh, strategy in this leader. Uh, Awaken, when your life is at four or less, you may draw one card, switch one of your energy to active mode, flip this card over. Pretty standard, we're not seeing a draw two here, we're seeing an untap one, uh, draw one. On the Awakened side, we have Kale, Demon of Universe 6. Uh, so this is the Universe 6 representative of Broly. Uh, auto, when this card attacks, draw one card. Auto, at the end of your, at the end of each player's turn, place up to one card under this card in your energy in rest mode. Uh, so this time, we're able to do it on either, either player's turn. Um, if you have a card under your leader at the end of your opponent's turn, you can still ramp, uh, getting that extra energy. We also have an activate battle here. Once per turn, this card gets plus 5,000 power for each for the battle for each card under this card. So if you are able to get cards under your leader on your opponent's turn, you're getting an extra boost there as an activate battle once per turn, uh, and then being able to ramp at the end of that turn. So <clears> similar <throat> to the Finn leader that we just kind of went over in the previous episode, right? You know, the permanent mm. is there. This is an activate battle, actually, so it's a little bit different. You get to choose when you kind of... Well, when I guess you act, when you want to activate it, but I mean, with the permanent for Finn, it was pretty much on permanently all the time. Mm, yeah, exactly. And we've seen ramp strategies in the past. They've kind of come and gone in the meta, yeah. um, depending on you know what what's what other decks are around. Yeah. Um, ramp can be quite strong. Obviously, this deck revolves around energy. It revolves around having cards in hand. Um, but if you've got more energy to use than your opponent. Uh, as long as you've got the cards available, then you can do more things, essentially. Absolutely. Uh, moving on to the battle cards, we have Kale, ready to fuse. When this card is played, look at up to five cards from the top of your deck. Add up to one blue Universe 6 card with an energy cost of three or less, or one blue Unison with a specified cost of two among them to your hand, then shuffle your deck. Activate main, once per turn, one blue. Look at up to three cards from the top of your deck, add up to one blue Kalipa or Kepler card among them to your hand, then place the remaining cards at the bottom of your deck in any order. Uh, so we see a standard auto, you know, being able to search top five, grab the piece that you need. This one requires three or less, uh, or the blue unison. Uh, we see a lot of these one drops that search for a battle card and a unison as well. Uh, with the added activate main, you know, being able to search the top three once per turn. Um, yeah, if you're going to be running a lot of blue... Kepler and Kale cards for your fusion pieces, potentially. Uh, this gives you the option to search those out. Next, we see SS2 Kalipa, Universe 6 combination. Uh, one cost, when this card is played, draw one. Activate main for two generic energy. If your leader is a blue Kale card, place this card under your leader card from your hand. You can't play non-Universe 6 battle cards with 35,000 power or less for the game. You can still play tokens. So, this is going to be alongside that strategy of being able to ramp at the end of your turn. Mm -hmm. uh, we've seen a lot of two cost kind of ramp strategies in the past. And what I mean by that is cards that you need to pay two energy for to get a ramp basically, um, comparing to Android 16, energy amplification, uh, Zeno as well, the unison that allowed you to ramp. So they're, they're going to let you ramp, but you're going to need to pay two mm -hmm. energy for it. And then getting that extra energy at the end of turn, um, obviously, you then have a restriction of not being able to play non-Universe 6 battle cards with 35,000 power for the game. Um, so that takes away some of the big boss monsters that we've seen in blue um, that can sometimes 
coexist with the ramp strategies. A lot of generic cards too, right? Like fighting against mm. and stuff like that. You know, man on a mission. You can't really play many over realms that that uh, you probably normally would. Yeah, exactly. And I think this is kind of just to get away from turning the tide. You know, which we've seen be quite a pain in ramp mm. strategies. Mm. Being able to get to seven energy, rip your opponent's hand, and then yeah. you can just kind of go from there. Uh, Dr. Rota powers draw one cost. When this card is played, draw one. Nothing exciting there. Uh, next, we have Kefla, Universe 6 Fusion Warrior. A two cost, two specified blue. Auto, when this card is played from your hand, draw two cards, choose one card in your hand, place it at the bottom of the deck. Activate main for one blue energy. If your opponent has two or more energy and you choose one Kalipa card and one Kale card in your drop area, play this card from your hand, then place the chosen cards under it. Activate main, limit one. If your leader is a blue universe six card and you discard this card from your hand, look at up to five cards from the top of your deck. Add up to one blue or yellow Khalifa or Kale card with an energy cost of four or less among them to your hand, then shuffle your deck. Heaps of text on this card. It does a bunch of different things. Mm. Uh, we're not seeing any fusion there. It's, a, it's an activate main of being able to put the cards from the drop area uh, under this card, but essentially works as a fusion. Um, auto when it gets played, you know, you're getting a, a near super combo effect, being able to draw two cards and bottom deck one, uh, and then the activate main, which can work with either leader, being able to pitch this from hand and search the top five. Um, interesting that they've noted blue or yellow Khalifa or Kale, mm -hmm. so we've seen a lot of uh, synergy between the old Universe 6, which Uma mentioned before, we haven't seen for a long time, so they know that people love U6, they want to give us the... the a strategy that works with the older cards as well. Um, so being able to use both blue and yellow is going to be great. Next we see SS Kale Universe 6 Combination. Counter attack, negate the attack and play this card. Uh, so it's a three cost for one specified blue. Uh, also has a permanent attached to this card. If your leader is a Universe 6 card and it's your opponent's turn, reduce the energy cost of this card in your hand by two. Mm -hmm. Auto, if your leader is a blue Kale card, when this card is played, you may choose one card in your hand and discard it. If you do, your opponent can't attack with battle cards with energy costs greater than their current energy for the turn unless they choose two cards in their hand and place them at the bottom of the deck each time. We've seen a card almost identical to this in the past, which was the SS2 Trunks Heroic Prospect. The only difference has been here. Uh, trunks require a unison to be on the field, mm. whereas this is going to be live almost immediately. Uh, another kind of difference between the two is Kale requires you to pitch a card, whereas Trunks just had to be played. Yep. Uh, and Kale's a 10k compared to Trunks, which was 15. Uh, we've seen Trunks get reprinted, you know, to oblivion at this point. We've seen a number of reprints for that card. Um, I am kind of surprised that they decided to give this card a similar effect. Um, perhaps it was just for fusion and things like that. I'm not too sure. Being able to uh, to play the four drop Kale on top of this. Um, but I would say that Trunks probably still takes the spot over this card. Yep. Moving on, we have SS Khalifa, Rapid Repost. Uh, 15K, three cost, one specified blue. Deflect, activate main, limit one for one blue. If your leader is a blue universe six card and you have two or more energy, play this card from your hand, draw one. Activate main for two generic. If your leader is a blue Kale card, place this card under your leader from your hand and you can't play non-universe six battle cards with 35,000 power or less for the game. You can still play tokens. Um, so being able to pay one, play this card, draw a card, that's good. It's deflect, so it's gonna hit the field. But the activate main for two energy is probably more why you'll be playing this card. Mm. Um, gives you another option to start ramping and things like that. Um, and of course, we have the restriction again. You can't play non-universe six battle cards with 35,000 power or less. So they're going to allow you to ramp. You can have that. It works with the deck. You know, that's what they want. But you're going to be limited to universe six for this deck. So I guess coming back to the idea, kind of what you were mentioning about the Trunks Heroic Prospect, right? You can't actually mm. run that in this deck if you're running the other cards that don't allow you to run the Universe 635K, which is kind of why I guess they tried to eliminate that barrier and that issue with the Kale. It's not going to be like for like. It's not going to be the exact same card. Um, obviously locked to the Kale leader, but they want to make sure that you obviously have those options to kind of run the cards that you normally would in the color um, for the leader itself since they gave it a couple of... Uh, Couple of restrictions, yeah. 
Yeah, good point. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I missed that. So, yeah, you're right. You lock out of universe. You lock into universe six cards, mm. so that card won't be an option. Hmm. Good pickup. Uh, next, we have SS Kel sorry SS Kefla, Unending Evolution, four energy, two specify blue, dual attack, Union Patara, two blue energy over Kalipa and Kale. Um, so having those cards on the field, pay two. You can combine them and play Kefla from hand. Auto. When this card is played from your deck, draw one, choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards and place it at the bottom of the owner's deck. And activate main for two blue. If your leader is a universe six card and your opponent has four or more energy, you may place this card at the bottom of its owner's deck. If you do, choose up to one blue Kefla card with an energy cost of eight in your hand and play it. Um, so we haven't seen Unipatora in quite a while. It's mm. not something that you know is really been relevant for the last few, few sets. Um, obviously that was how Kale and uh, Khalifa fused in the show, so it's fitting that they do have the, the Patara on there. Um, the auto is when this card is played from the deck. If I can remember correctly, I don't think we've seen too many cards that can actually play this from the deck mm. just yet. Um, none come to mind, but quite a strong activate main there. Um, we do have a lot of blue-yellow Kefla cards with energy cost of 8 that are available to be played, um, which we will be going over in some of the deck ideas and videos and things like that, you know, the different kind of cards that can be played. Um, but for today, we're just going over mono blue cards. Next, we have the, the unison for the deck, SS Khalifa, Spirited Striker. It's a two specified blue unison. Plus one, activate main. This card gets plus 5,000 power for the turn. Then choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards with an energy cost of two or less, return it to the owner's hand. Uh, minus three, activate main. If your leader is a blue KO card and you have five or more energy, you may place this card under your leader card. If you do, play up to one blue Kefla with 30,000 power or less from your deck, then shuffle your deck. Uh, plus one's not bad, you know, getting to 20k, being able to swing. Um, it always feels painful bouncing back two or less cards to your opponent's hand because they're you know quite easy for them to play again. It feels so much better just being able to bottom deck cards rather than giving it back to their hand. You know, they get combo power again, things like that. Mm. Um, but being able to remove a two cost that might be a little pesky and you can't get rid of in any other way, at least you've got the option there. Um, the minus three on this is, yeah, quite strong. Being able to play a blue Kefla, sorry, play, play one Kefla card with 30,000 power or less, so it doesn't just have to be blue. Mm. Um, working next. again with that blue-yellow um, synergy again. So we see here a restriction of 30,000 power or less compared to the four drop that we just went over, which was an eight cost or less. So you got a couple of options there. I believe most of the Kefla cards uh, eight or less are around the 30,000 power mm. that you want to be playing. Um, but it's got you the options there, so you can be playing any Kepler as long as it's 30,000 power or less, which I guess does give you the option to play that card that we just covered, um, playing it from the deck, being able to draw one, yeah. and then bottom deck cards. So there you go, there's the synergy there. I had, I'd missed that until now. Um, it's interesting when you get all these cards lined up, you can kind of see how the, the synergy works a bit better. Um, yeah, so you get the minus three, you can play that Kefla or any other one from the deck. Uh, this goes under your leader, allowing you to ramp again at the end of the turn. Uh, then we have the SR for the, for the Universe 6, a sister's determination, one cost blue. Counter attack, if your leader is a Universe 6 card, so working with either leader, negate the attack, you may choose one blue card in your hand and discard it. If you do, your opponent can only attack one more time for the turn with a battle card or unison card with 20,000 power or more. Uh, also, activate battle, limit one. If it's your opponent's turn, choose up to one of your cards. It gets plus 10,000 power for the battle. Then switch up to, then choose up to one of your mono blue energy and switch to active mode. So we see the counter attack here, uh, kind of resembling violent rays in a way. Mm. Um, obviously you're limiting your opponent's uh, 20,000 power battle card or unison cards attacks for the turn, whereas Violent Rage had to choose, um, but the difference here being they still get one more. Whether that's better than Violent Rage, whether that's worse, you know, it'll take a bit of testing to kind of see if this is a staple in Universe 6. Mm. Um, I definitely think that it does have its own place here. Um, we've got the Activate Battle Limit 1 attached as well, being able to get that free 10k, you know, as long as you've got an energy in active mode and it's your opponent's yeah. turn. Um, yeah, no issues with that. <laughs> 
What are your thoughts on this card? Uh, I think the art is actually one of the best arts in the in the set. I mean, it's probably probably a little bit biased, um, but <laughs> I mean, it's still it, it's amazing, you know, to have it even on an extra card. I'm I'm very very happy that it didn't get an SPR uh, because I you know didn't want them to kind of like botch it up or like make it worse than the SR. But this is just plenty for me. Yeah, definitely. Universe 6 had some great scenes in Tournament of Power. Yeah. Um, that fight with, between Kefla and UI Goku, you know, mm. sensational. Ke- Khalifa and Kefla, sorry, Khalifa and Kale working together against Goku when he was, you know, yeah. exhausted. Yeah. Some great scenes, yeah. They've really, they've really stepped it up with the artwork here. Uh, then the last card we have, another SR. Five cost, two specify blue, Kale, Rampaging Demon. Deflect, Double Strike, Auto... When this card is played without using skills, choose one. Choose all of your opponent's battle cards with energy cost of three or more. Place them at the bottom of the owner's deck. And if your leader is a blue Kale card, place up to one card from the top of your deck under your leader card. Uh, or you have the option, if you have seven or more energy, choose all of your opponent's battle cards, ignoring barrier. Place them at the bottom of the owner's deck. And then this card gains barrier and dual attack for the turn. Mm. So giving you a couple of different options depending on where you are in the game, how much energy you have, you know, things like that. Um, but that that second effect is quite strong. Yeah, being able to just remove all of your opponent's cards, place them at the bottom of the deck. They don't go back to hand. You don't get those cards to combo with. And then you're staring down the barrel of a 30k double strike dual attack. Yeah. Uh, sensational. Yeah, but that's all the cards for, for Kale. Obviously, there's some synergy between these cards that also work with the, the Cavalier as well. Um, you know, they have kind of got them a blanket for Universe 6. But, uh, Image, you want to take us over the Cavalier deck? Yeah, so we'll obviously get to the better leader of the two. Um, <laughs> possibly the best leader in the, in the set itself. It's my boy Cabba. Um, I mean, I originally I thought that they might kind of... Um, reboot the old the old Kaba and Vegeta leader from the expert deck which was one of my favorite decks of all time uh but this is still good you know I'll take this you know there's still hope one day that we kind of get some of the good reboots but you know this will definitely definitely do for now um standard 10k uh auto choose one universe six card in your hand and discard it when this card attacks draw two cards um we're not seeing the extra cards kind of have that tag with the permanent this card also gains universe six in all areas so it has to be a battle card virtually um awaken when your life is at four or less or you have a blue unison card with a specified cost of two in play you may draw two cards add cards to your life until you have six life left then flip this card over we've been going over the whole idea of you know having the specified cost two unison and you get to awaken early you get down 15k at six life you get to kind of control the tempo blue has a lot of ways to stall as well so i'm i'm starting to become a really big fan of the idea of awakening at six and then controlling the game from there um having a secondary way to awaken is always handy depending on what situation you're in um so i i highly rate that ability looking to the awaken side you've got champer in the background you got super saiyan cover proud volley um guys i'm just gonna put it out there now if you get this leader in stamped it's it's a grail already just get it graded put it somewhere safe put it in a safe uh if you can because yeah, that is... <laughs> oh. Just message him and you can retire early. <laughs> I'll buy all of them. Buying every <laughs> single one of those copies. Uh, the auto once per turn. If it's your opponent's turn, when you play a Universe 6 card, switch up to one of your blue energy to active mode. Uh, we're going to see a bit of synergy with some of the cards that we've got in this in this reveal itself. Uh, the secondary auto, when this card attacks, draw one card. Uh, activate battle once per turn, spirit boost one. Use up to one blue Universe 6 card from your drop area in a combo with its skills negated for the turn. Uh, this is this is kind of amazing to me. This allows you to kind of use uh, Arrival. Um, there are obviously multicolor Universe 6 cards. You know, we've got the Goku here. We've got the Champa Vardos. You know, I won't go into all the details uh, right now because obviously, like Ryan mentioned, we'll have some deck ideas with a lot of the other old school cards and kind of kind of see what a full package looks like um so yeah i don't want to kind of spoil anything in there and you know you'll be able to go into it more detail as well to kind of to kind of explain um we'll go into the cards there's a lot of them to go through in in this side here so we'll get into the one drop cabba uh it's the standard you know trunks that we used to see uh, i think it was colossal warfare just a one drop auto add one card from your life to your hand when this card attacks 10k power critical for the turn we've got the extra card i mean this is one amazing looking extra card as well i'm glad that it's a rare because it's going to come in a stamp variant 
Um, Universe 6 combination, you've got obviously all the three Saiyans there. Uh, Counter-attack, negate the attack. If your leader card is a Universe 6 card, play up to one Universe 6 card with an energy cost of one from your drop area with his skills negated for the turn. So not for the game, for the turn. Um, you can still play that one drop cabba that we just mentioned. The leader also gets a nice effect once you do that as well. Um, it got a lot of nice synergy to this, and you still negate the attack for one energy as well. Uh, activate main as well with a one mandatory blue. If your leader card is a universe six card, choose all of your battle cards with both Saiyan and universe six, and they get 5k power for the turn. So kind of kind of good. Like if you're going for game, if you've got a wide board, if you want to kind of, I mean, 5k to every every universe six on the board. Um, well, that obviously has Saiyan in its in its line as well. But I mean, still, if you don't, if you're going for game and you're not going to use the counter attack anyway, um, kind of a good card to still have in your hand. I, I I do believe we're going to see multiple copies of this card in both decks. In in all honesty, yeah, uh, definitely, it just gives you the option there. Yeah, and Universe Six Assemble. Um, I still think this is a great card too. I mean, I like the Assemble cards. It kind of gives you an idea of like you know who's in the universe. You know, it lets you do a couple of cool things. Uh, one one cost blue. If your leader card is a universe six card, you can activate this card's activate battle skill from your hand without paying its energy cost. That skill being used up to one blue universe six card from your drop area in a combo. It gets minus five thousand combo power and has its skills negated for the turn. Still fine. Um, it still gives you the multicolor option in case you do want to arrival for free. Um, the fact that you get to combo from the drop and then activate the leader ability as well is is completely insane to me. Um, also it does have an activate main as well. Look at up to the top, look at up to seven cards from the top of your deck. Add up to one blue universe six card with an energy cost of five or less among them to your hand and shuffle your deck. Uh, either, either, you know, ability is, is great. I think I'd probably use the activate battle more so. It's free. It allows me to set up, um, arrival, um, but just free combo as well. And the activate battle, you can do it on both turns. Uh, Batamo, stock standard, 20k, uh, two cost beater, skillless. Uh, another extra card, Mentor's Rescue. Uh, you got Vegeta and Kaba. Uh, nice little synergy there. Father son moment. The son that I, that he never <laughs> had. Uh, counterplay, if your leader card is a Kaba card, so specifically designed for this deck itself. If the battle card being played has 20k power or more, play up to one blue Universe 7 Vegeta card with blocker from your deck. Negate its non-keyword skills for the game, then shuffle your deck. A couple of options here. Um, again, we're not going to kind of go into it too much um, into this. Into this. Well, I believe there's only one at this point, to be honest. Was it one? Yeah, I believe there's only one from one of the draft boxes that uh, that came out that works with this deck, if I remember correctly. Yeah, we did look at a couple, but one of them didn't have the Universe 7 tag on it. Uh... So, yeah, I believe as it stands right now, there's only one, okay. unless I'm mistaken. Yeah, okay. Um, stay tuned for Ryan's video to see which Virginia card <laughs> that is. Um, we got Frost Evolutionary Milestone. Uh, I feel like you can't have like any Universe 6 card without having Frost in it as well. Um, it's blocker 10k, 2 cost, uh, 1 mandatory blue when this card is played. Top 7, add up to 1 blue Universe 6 with an energy cost of 5 or less uh, to your hand and shuffle your deck. Pretty, pretty stock standard, nothing crazy. Uh, 2 cost cabba that's mandatory blue. Uh, it is a super combo, sparking 5. Uh, not sure how I feel about the uh, sparking side of things. I mean, you kind of do want to have cards in your drop at almost all times anyway because you're going to be trying to use them for free. You're going to be trying to arrival. Um, you're going to want to get that leader effect off as well. So it, it's okay. Um, it is a 10 cost, uh, sorry, a 10k combo um, regardless at what time you're at. I mean, even if you're awake in that six life and you kind of feel uh, you're fueling your drop area, it could be it could be very handy. And it's a Universe 6 target as well, so you'll be able to search it. Magetta, standard uh, 3 cost 30k beta. Um, we haven't really seen many 30k beaters in, in other decks, actually, that they've revealed. It's more the, 10, the 10k and the 20k, so seeing a 30k here, obviously searchable again. Um, but yeah, a bit different than the other colors. Mm. Uh, we got Perina, Universe 6 combination. When this card is played, draw one. Then choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards with an energy cost of three or less and return it to its owner's hand. Um, not sure how much play it'll obviously see. Uh, it's a three cost, uh, 15k beta. It might be nice to return something to hand, but I feel like we've got a lot of board removal and a lot of other cards that kind of do this job better, um, in my opinion. And then we've got Say Now. Very similar kind of uh, style of card. Three cost, 
10k combo power, 15k battle card. At the end of a battle, which this card was used in a combo from your hand, play this card from your drop area in rest mode. So you're not going to pay three for this almost ever. Um, it's kind of like the old school Gohan. Um, I'm not sure if you remember that card. Uh, it was like a 10k combo when you use it. Uh, it comes into the field in rest. Um, but this is specifically from your hand, so you can't use it from the uh, drop effects. Uh, but again, I don't know how much you'll really want to use this as well. Mm, yeah, and I guess it does work with a bit of synergy with uh, some of the previous Universe 6 support that we have. I believe with the um, Champa and Vados reduce the energy cost mm. by one mm. um, for Universe 6 cards. So a free 10k, you play it from, from hand. You yeah, know, an option there. Yeah, not, not too bad of a, of a chain there. Uh, we got another Frost, Universal Deception. Unique barrier three costs with a one mandatory blue. The auto is two mandatory blue. At the start of your main phase, choose up to one blue Frost card with an energy cost of four in your hand and play it on top of this card. Uh, the Activate main is another two mandatory blue. If a Freezer or Universe 6 card is in play in your battle area, play this card from your hand, then choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards in rest mode and place it at the bottom of its owner's deck. Again, speaking about that uh, that way to remove cards from the field, you know, things like that, this is obviously, I feel like, a better option. It's not limited to the three cost. Um, this is just choose one of your opponent's battle cards in rest mode and place it at the bottom of the deck. Um, I think it's got great synergy uh, with a couple of uh, other cards. I mean, we'll look at the we'll look at the four cost frost that it actually goes into. This one has deflected to 20k. When this card is played, choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards and place it at the bottom of its owner's deck. Again, a really nice option to do that. Playing it on top of the other card uh, for two is is fantastic. The flex, so it's always going to hit the board as well. Activate main once per turn. Place all the cards under this card in their owner's drop areas. If you placed one or more cards in a drop area using this skill, this card gets 5k power and double strike for the turn. If you're evolving, you're going to have that other frost underneath it. Um, you're going to be able to swing for a 25k double strike. Um, and when it's played, you're going to be able to bottom deck another card from your opponent. I mean... Pretty good synergy with the whole deck altogether. Um, I think that you know, depending on depending on the the space, this could be a nice chain to add in. But again, we'll have to see uh, how good the other cards are in the deck, and yeah, go from there. Uh, three cost Champa, right on time. Two mandatory blue. It has double strike nineteen k. Counter attack, negate the attack, and play this card. Permanent during your opponent's turn, reduce the energy cost of this card in your hand by one. Um, again, another card that plays um from a from a negate it's got double strike and it's a 19k uh it doesn't get played in rest either so it's kind of going to sit there hopefully to your your next turn um and a two cost 19k double strike that negates the attack in a blue deck that allows you to untap and and uh you know negate a lot not a bad option in, in my opinion Mm, and you will get that untapped from lead if it's your opponent. Well, it will be your opponent's turn when you yeah. negate the attack. Um, so as long as you've got the two energy available, you can play it and then untap one. Yeah. So for one energy virtually to have a double strike 19k um, mm. is is kind of crazy to me. Um, Vardos, right on time. Similar kind of uh, effect. It's got three. It's a three cost with two mandatory blue. Dual attack 19k. Uh, counter play this time. Play this card. And if the battle card being played has an energy cost of three or less return it to its owner's hand instead permanent during your opponent's turn reduce the energy cost of this card in your hand by one um so again playing a card on your opponent's turn you get to untap another energy but it's going to be a once per turn so depending on which card you'd rather obviously you've got that ability you're either going to negate an attack or you're going to counter play dual attack 19k not too bad because your opponent still has to combo a card from their hand to get past the 19k um and again it doesn't come in rest or anything like that either so we're seeing a lot of that, you know, play on your opponent's turn again, right? We did obviously see that um, in the in the blue baby um, deck that we that we don't see as much anymore, obviously with the uh, with the new text on Planet Tuffle. Yeah, the Errata. Yeah, so kind of interesting to see that they've kind of incorporated a bit more into this as well. Um, we'll go into the hit Universe Six combination. Very kind of similar lines of play, right? This one's got critical fifteen k, three cost two mandatory blue. Again, permanent during your opponent's turn, reduce the energy cost by one from your hand. Uh, counter play, play this card. Auto when this card is played, choose one of your opponent's battle cards with an energy cost of three or less and return it to its owner's hand. So it's not when it's being played, um, it's any card on the field after a card has been played as well. It's a 15k crit. Um, still not a bad mm -hmm. card to play on your opponent's turn. Again, it's a one cost crit. 
Um, you get to bounce something back that's three or less. Uh, still that synergy, I guess, right? To to kind of continue to play cards on your opponent's turn. You've got the free combo to arrival stuff, but I mean, I feel like the arrival is what you're going to be wanting to do more on your opponent's turn. Being able to combo stuff from the drop for free and then being able to play those cards almost for free um, that, you, that you'll most likely go into a bit more detail later on, Ryan. Yeah, I would like to see this and the Vardos bottom deck instead of bounce back to hand. Yeah. But it's still something that they kind of want to work towards with blue, sending cards back to hand. Yeah. There is some, it's kind of like half-half now where they, some cards bounce back, some cards bottom deck. Initially, we saw pretty much all cards bounce back to hand, but they are kind of giving us a bit of both now. Yeah. Uh, and then we've got a five-cost hit. Uh, it is three mandatory blue. It's got double strike 25k. EX Evolve. If you have three or more energy, a hit card with an energy cost of three or four. So just touching on that hit that we just spoke about before. So it's not just going to be a 15k crit, but you will be able to EX Evolve. Um, it's also going to counter attack, negate the attack and play this card. And the same kind of ability during your opponent's turn, reduce the energy cost of this card in your hand by two. So two ways to obviously play this. You can EX Evolve on the other one if you're going to counter play. Um, and then you'll be able to obviously evolve it on your own turn for one blue. 25k double strike for one after well after you play it on your opponent's turn isn't isn't too bad either uh, i guess giving you more of an option to kind of go into that chain if you wanted to right hmm. um now one of the srs that is kind of designed for this deck and i think it's an amazing sr i think it's one of the best unison srs we have ever seen so far hmm. and i'm all for it right um it obviously does have an SPR variant as well, um, but I still think this SR is kind of crazy good looking. I mean, I honestly prefer this over the SPR. Um, this is what the this is what the leader was talking about, right? With a specified cost of two, you'll be able to awaken a six life. Hit battlefield manipulator. You can see, obviously, he's kind of like you know froze time. He's got Goku right exactly where he wants him. I think the foiling on this card is going to be amazing. I cannot wait to see it. Auto once per turn. If it's your opponent's turn, when you play a blue battle card using a rival, add a marker to this card. We know that there is ways to kind of use that arrival on in this deck, right? I'm not going to go into too much detail, but there is cards that specifically arrival um, with Universe 6. Um, so you'll probably be using that a lot of the time, especially with the leader effect to combo a card from your drop area for free virtually. Um, the plus one is draw one. Amazing. Very, very stock standard now on leaders, uh, on unisons with a plus one. Um, always great to draw an extra card when you need it. Um, uh, minus one. So not really anything high intense here, but it does have a mandatory two blue energy. If your leader card is blue or a universe six card and your opponent has three or more energy, flip your opponent's leader to the front if you do, your opponent can't activate their leader cards, Awaken and Wish skills until the end of their next turn. This is absolutely crazy. We have seen effects, obviously, from other cards that mention, you know, flipping back and forth. Obviously, other hit cards specifically I'm talking about. Um, I mean, we've got cards that give all Universe 6 cards plus 5k power for the turn. Um, I mean, flipping it over to, you know, their unawakened side, they won't be able to use it again. Uh, most of the time, the awakened ability is stronger than the unawakened ability as well. So if they've kind of got that, even the cabba, right? You won't be able to really use something from the drop. Um, you know, the spirit boost, etc. Uh, but I mean, also negging the leader pretty much 5k for the turn. And then being able to kind of swing with an extra 5k throughout the whole the whole turn that is and it's a it's it's a minus one i know it's too mandatory blue right but i mean the way that to, to play defensive on your opponent's turn we already know blue does that anyway then you'll be able to use this card to kind of flip it back uh, they won't be able to awaken until pretty much your next turn um <laughs> and then you can pretty much do it again right like you just wait for them to awaken again on your turn like when you're going you know possibly for game or you know they're trying to defend and then just bang minus one two energy again let's go for it like it's absolutely crazy to see that this card is used in can be used in all blue not just you know the universe six but any blue leader is uh, a little bit a little bit mind-boggling to me 
Yeah, me too. This card made a bit of waves when it first got revealed. That Just that minus one is so cheap. <laughs> Obviously, the two blue energies attached, but it's still not that much. And this yeah. shuts down, you know, some decks in general. Like, you know, think about Hatch, which can't swing until it's on its awakened side. You know, you flip it back to its front, you're locked out for another three turns, um, gaining that extra 5k essentially on all attacks since your opponent's going to be a 10k leader. Yep. Yeah, this card is crazy. Yeah, absolutely. And even in that as well, um, you know, there's not really much spirit boost that we're seeing with these two decks, right? Like they haven't really slapped on like spirit boost to crazy good effect. You're going to mm. start negging your counters, right? You're almost going to always have counters on this card unless your opponent swings at you. Even when you play, you know, something with a, a rival, you get another you get another token. Like this card is always going to have tokens on it, I feel. Probably very scary to go against Finn. Um, I would say that that's one kind of counter to this, you know, kind of scooping it up and obviously making it with a, with its whole skills negated. Um, that's going to be very interesting to go against. But yeah, in other situations, I feel like it's always going to kind of have those counters on it. It's always going to be at like three or four and you're never going to have to worry about being swung into. Mm, yeah, for sure. Um, then we've got SS Kaba Proud Zenith, the other SR um, in the deck. It's a five cost mandatory one blue, so still kind of allowing you to maybe go that multicolor route if you needed to. Um, unique dual attack blocker auto. When this card is played, choose one. If it's your turn, draw two cards. If it's your opponent's turn, place up to one of your opponent's battle cards with an energy cost of four or less at the bottom of its owner's deck. Then switch up to one of your blue energy to active mode. Uh, auto at the end of your turn, switch this card to active mode. Uh, and activate main slash battle mandatory blue plus two more energy if there are a total of three or more blue and or yellow cards in your battle area and or combo area play this card from your hand so cheap way to kind of bring this out for three if you play this in your opponent's turn it plays out for two technically right you'll be able to play it from your your hand um if it's your opponent's turn you obviously get the bottom deck a four or less then switch another one of your blue energy to active mode and then switch one for lead if it's the first card that's that's what i mean like it, you'll be able to pretty much um you know play this for one you're gonna have it as a dual attack blocker it can be bounced back it is a five cost uh however so not everything that you know we've kind of spoken about will be able to affect it um but you know a 19k dual attack blocker Switching back to active, so you'll be able to swing with it twice on your turn. Come back and activate the blocker ability. Might stop an attack that's 15k itself. Um, but, I mean, playing that for one on your opponent's turn, there's so much that you can do um, on their turn that obviously, you know, depends on how you want to play it and which style you want to go down. Obviously, you only get the untap one NG one time on the leader effect. Um, so you need to kind of sequence this properly. Um, there needs to be a total of three or more blue or yellow and or yellow cards in the battle area and or combo area. Um, so I feel like you're still going to have battle cards on the field. You're going to be able to combo one for free from the drop pretty much every turn anyway. So, I mean, you just need another two cards either on the battle area uh, or in the combo area. But I'm, I'm a big fan of this card. Um, big reason why. It can be played in any blue deck. Um, it, it's kind of crazy uh, to see that these this card kind of exists again. Th those two last SRs that we kind of spoke about just to be played in any blue deck um, is is kind of good. I mean, we did obviously see blue get hit a little bit um, with the most recent uh, ban list. Mm, losing um, Galactic Buster, yeah. Yeah, and obviously, you know, Bojack to kind of, you know, stop the Aegis play, but that kind of brings down, I guess, the usage of blue-yellow cards. Um, so it would be very interesting that this deck will mainly revolve around all of Universe 6, including the yellow cards. But again, we'll be going into that a bit more detail down the track, Ryan, and you'll be able to kind of figure out uh, what you feel like is a, is a good idea and what the what the best style of play is. But I am very, very keen um, for this deck, and I think the other one that I'm mostly keen for, uh, well, actually two, is Finn and uh, Broly uh, to play. But yeah, a couple of really good you know leader cards and, and new archetypes that uh, are being revolved around and being released in like the the one set that you kind of like you can pick it up and go right um but uh yeah ryan anything that you uh you know i guess really stood out to you in this in this kind of deck um before we kind of head out 
No, not so much. Yeah, just those last two SRs that we went over, just the synergy between all you know blue car, uh, all blue decks that they can kind of fit into, um, the power of them. Obviously, Cav is a bit more expensive on play, but yeah, strong effects. You know, yeah. I think that yeah, they've they've really hit the mark with the SRs here, um, with the power coinciding with the kind of rarity. You know, they are SRs, make them strong. Um, keep the rares in those kind of, you know, maybe you can play it, maybe you don't want to play it kind of thing. But the SRs, in my opinion, should should have strong effects and they, they really hit the mark here. Yeah, absolutely. And I agree with you 100%. And giving giving us so many blue SRs that are Universe 6 based, you know, is, is amazing. Um, I actually can't wait to see these in person and I hope that they kind of live up to it. I think that hit SR is going to look amazing, um, the Unison. Mm um all right well that is it from uh blue reveals guys if you haven't already checked out our other reveals they're all up on our youtube channel um consider subscribing to the channel so you know when new videos come up if you do enjoy the content uh, it also helps us grow leave any feedback that you have on here anything good anything bad uh so that way we can kind of continue to improve for us for yourself um check out our facebook page double sleeved you'll be able to see it in the intro you'll be able to you'll be able to see it in the uh in the description below um, but apart from that, guys, thank you so much for tuning in to another episode. I uh, hope to see you again later on and look forward to much more content coming your way. Take care, guys. See you later, guys.